Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The vanity code, one word, is Dwyer Boxing News, the same vanity code you would use on iTunes. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> You know, Amir Khan's fight against Devin Alexander is just days away. I'm a bit shocked that Amir Khan decided to pursue this fight because I consider this fight to be extremely dangerous for him. I believe style-wise he'd have a better time against Floyd Mayweather, right? Amir Khan also has another blockbuster box office opportunity against Kell Brook. So I don't understand what he's doing here, fighting Devin Alexander, a very dangerous fighter who, of course, has dissected Marcus Maidana, who, of course, has dissected Randall Bailey, right? Both of them huge punchers. Jesus Soto Caras, a rough and tumble guy no one wants to fight, right? Understand. Devin Alexander has never been beaten from the outside in. The guys who have roughed him up have been Timothy Bradley up close inside and Sean Porter. Right? So, I'm not exactly sure how Amir Khan thinks he has a decided advantage in this fight. Right? I think it's going to be very tough for him. Very tough for him. Now, curiously enough, the casinos have Devin Alexander as a decided underdog. Now, I have no clue who's going to win the fight. But just looking for value, right? If it's a 50-50 fight and the casino is going to give you 2-1 to one on the underdog, I believe the value play here is with the underdog, Devin Alexander. Here's what bothers me. If it's an ambush style, where Amir Khan's just jumping in, doing damage, and then jumping back out, Amir Khan likely has the advantage. But if a chess match breaks out, where they stay in the pocket, I would go with Devin Alexander. I think Devin Alexander, simply put, is the better chess player, right? Let's talk about Sean Porter. It's true Sean Porter's outside, then Sean Porter comes inside. But understand, Sean Porter can stay inside, and it's a different dynamic, too. Sean Porter got underneath. Porter's shorter than Amir Khan. He got underneath Devin Alexander's guard. And he was able to create a Timothy Bradley type of dynamic. You might recall in that Timothy Bradley Devin Alexander fight, Alexander had a problem with Timothy Bradley's head, which was right here, right? The two guys clash heads in that fight. Now, one of the hallmarks of Amir Khan is his ability to use length, right? Amir Khan's head's not going to be here. Right? If it is here, he's making a mistake because that's not his game. You need to do things that you do best in tough matches. You can't show up with a completely different playbook that you yourself are unfamiliar with. Right? So, I consider this a dangerous bout. This is one of those bouts where, as I said earlier, I don't have a clue who wins this fight. Just understand, though, that in my opinion, Amir Khan's going to have to keep moving in this one to win it, right? If he tries to fight the kind of fight that he fought against Julio Diaz, he's going to be in trouble. Let's remember, he gets dropped in that Diaz matchup, right? Understand, were he to have fought Floyd Mayweather, the question with Mayweather right now and I know Mayweather has proven this wrong in fight after fight. But I have the question of whether Mayweather's legs are the same. Right? Mayweather looks like a guy who likes to get over to the ropes at times. Right? Mayweather's not a Timothy Bradley guy who's pushing the issue up court. 
He's not Jesus Soto Carras, who's pushing the issue up court. He's not Marcus Maidana, who's pushing the issue up court. He's a counterpuncher who likes to be outside. Right? He likes you to try to come and get him. Then he's countering you. That style has problems. Right? Against an ambush fighter with a jab and length. Like Amir Khan. Right? Devin Alexander to me is a little bit different. Right? I don't see Khan knocking on the front door, walking in the kitchen, and staying there like Lucas Matisse tried to do against Devin Alexander. Right? Khan's not the kind of guy who's going to stay there and throw bombs until one hits. No, Khan's across the street. Then he breaks in your door. It's more of a quick home invasion. Then he's out. That's going to be his fight style. Devin Alexander, like Lamont Peterson, is going to try to cut the ring off on it. If he does, and he starts to land up close, you're in for problems. Understand, too, Devin Alexander has power. I know some of his recent fights have gone the distance. Right? But go back to the Juan Urango fight. You're going to see Devin Alexander can literally knock you off your feet with an uppercut. Right? And so this fight to me is dangerous. Right? There is a question on Amir Khan's punch resistance, isn't there? I view this fight as a jump ball. Either guy can win. I don't understand why Devin Alexander is a 2-1 to one underdog at the casino. <clears throat> I think the gamblers are a little bit too giddy here. I know Amir Khan has looked good of late. But Devin Alexander, as I said before, hasn't lost to a guy who's outside. If you're Sean Porter, you can take that extra step and bounce inside and be right here on his chest. If you're Timothy Bradley and your head's right here, okay, Devin has a problem. I just haven't seen Devin have a problem with guys who are outside. Right? Keep in mind, too. American, excellent jab. Devin Southpaw might be able to avoid the jab. American, excellent hand speed. Folks, don't sleep on Devin Alexander's hand speed. This is a jump ball. That's how I see it. Let me hear how you see it. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Let's talk about this. Thanks for stopping by.